This is the Power of Osmosis Podcast, powered by the Vidwheel Creator Network. Hi, everyone. This is the Power of Osmosis video podcast, powered by Vidwheel Creator Network. I am John Osberg, also known as Johnny Osmosis. And today I am joined once again by the social intelligence operative himself, Mr. John Bordage. John, welcome to the show again. Thank you so much, John, for having me. Looking forward to chatting with you today. It, it, well, and I am too. And um, this is part two of, uh, of our three-part series that we talked about um, in, our, in our last conversation, uh, which was a smash hit. Um, and so thanks again for your time there. Today, uh, audience, this is going to be a how-to on networking. So very excited to unearth that because, uh, you know, your network is your net worth, as the cliche goes. And today we'll talk about the strategies of networking. We're going to talk about the process of networking and then the tools of conversation within networking. So all things networking with the social intelligence operative himself. John, let's dive into it. Let's start with principles and strategies. Why don't we define okay. that? Let's talk about some of the principles. The first one, let's start off, what is a network? We have to understand what we're doing here. What is a network? All right. And many people will say, well, it's my collection of people. It's my contacts. It's, you know, when I boil it down, what a network is, is a force multiplier. Why is that? Well, let me define what a force multiplier is. A force multiplier is a tool, principle, or idea that allows you to produce more or do more than you ever could without it. And that's exactly what a network does. It takes everything that you are, your intelligence, your expertise, your context, your perspective, and multiplies it for you. This allows you to grow. We're talking about growth and transformation. It's really an accelerant to growth and transformation uh, network really is. So that's what a network is. Then what is networking? Networking is simply the process of getting to know people. It's about building relationships. Now, here's the big one which most people don't realize, is the deeper you build those relationships, the more you get out of your network. And I know people that I deal with that have, say, 20 to 25,000 connections on LinkedIn, but is that really your network? So if I picked up the phone and I needed something, all right, is it really that big? No, basically, it's the relationships you build. And here's what most people don't realize, that Face-to-face networking is 70% of the foundation of your network, all right? It is the other 30% that we're going to do online through Facebook, through LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. You know, just doing that, that's fantastic, being able to do that. But I want you to understand that face-to-face networking is 70% of that, okay? So if I'm going to go out and I'm going to network, you need to have what I would say is the networking strategy. I need to get it straight here. So, The one principle, one strategy I always say, listen, understand you win in this life by multiplication, not subtraction, by being inclusive, not exclusive. Because here's the reality is that you need a team to be successful in life and in business. This whole thing where I've heard people say, I'm a self-made man or a self-made woman. Let me tell you something. I've been an entrepreneur for over 30 years. That's a myth. That is a myth I want to break here today. Just destroy it because that's a myth. And can I throw in something quick that's Absolutely. perfectly congruent? It's literally spot of the moment, spur of the moment, I mean. Um, I've revisited The Last Dance, which is a um, 10-part documentary on the 1990s Chicago Bulls with a focus on Michael Jordan. Hmm. Michael Jordan went from the exclusive mindset, right, and the, the self-made mindset in the 80s um, until then Phil Jackson came in, the coach, and got him to think exactly what you just said, which is the inclusionary, the full smart, full smart, force multiplication way, John, which then guess what? Six rings. So there you go. nothing more needs okay. to be said. So that's that idea. Because if you're in isolation, isolation cuts you off from everything, help, resources, information, opportunities, the larger perspective, everything that a network and doing that collaboration you know, brings to you, that cuts you off from. And here's what I realized a very long time ago. I'm not as smart as Stephen Hawking or Leonardo da Vinci, and I don't have all these, I'm not a Superman, but if I have that network, I can multiply all those concepts when I need it, all right? If you're a great networker and you understand those principles, you can be a Superman. 
All right. Well, I do a lot of lecturing at universities, at schools of business management. And I get up in the front of those young people and I said, listen, I never worry about being the smartest guy in the room. And their eyes get so big because I said, if I have the biggest, best network, I am the smartest guy in the room. All right. Because so that's that multiplication strategy. The other part of it is that when you go out, you have to ask yourself some questions. First off, who do I want in my network? Because we've talked about this, the concept and strategy of cut. You only have a finite amount of time, all right? So who do I want in my network? Where am I gonna focus my efforts? Well, the question is you have to ask yourself from there is what do I want? What is your plan, your mission, your strategy for your business and for your life, all right? Then you have to ask yourself then, where can I find these people? How can I get out there? Where can I find these people? You know, who can help me get to where I'm going? That's the other part of it is, is who can help me get to where I'm going, where I'm going and where can I find these people? All right. That kind of lays down the strategy of how I'm going to get out there and how I'm going to operate. Because if you go out there just with the shotgun method, you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of energy. All right. Rifle. And you're find Rifle. that you're not getting anywhere. All right. You know, where can I find those people? I always say, listen, if you're fishing for the great white shark in the middle of the Sahara Desert, you're going to be there a while. You need to know where they are and you need to go to where they are because it, there's a process in that way. Let's talk a little bit about the process. The first part of the process is I have to have that open mindset. Okay. I need to be receptive to meeting people, collaborating, working with people, and doing that force multiplication. The next is visibility. You know, as one said that 90% of life is just showing up. That's never more true than when you're networking. You have to be visible because when I see you, you go on my radar. You're in my head now. And then I can use those other tools like LinkedIn to follow up. But that initial meeting and being visible and being out there is so incredibly important. And now we're getting this COVID under control. A lot of that is back on again. All right. The next step, which is probably one of the most important steps that, and I always tell people, listen, be very focused on this, is building trust and credibility with people. This is where I'm building the relationship. I'm building my trust. I'm building my credibility. But what I'm really building is my personal brand. Yes. You know, in future talks, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but let me give them just kind of a short and personal brand. If I set a name like Mercedes Benz, what do you think of? Luxury yeah. automobile, precision engineering, you know, um, innovation. So those are the thoughts, qualities, and attributes when you think about Mercedes Benz. What's your personal brand is when I interact with you, what are the thoughts, qualities, and attributes I think about at your brand? So you're building your personal brand with people because there's two types of networkers. There's the hunter and the cultivator. The hunter generally goes out, they'll get into a room, they're looking for the biggest player in the room. They're great with the schmooze. Then this, they'll connect with them and say, let's go out for lunch. Let's go out for coffee. And then when they do that, I've got a contract. There's a bridge I want you to buy. What did they do? The hunter goes from visibility, skips over trust and credibility, which is so incredibly important, and they want to get to the transaction. The cultivator is you plant the seed, you take the time, you nurture it, that relationship until it grows. That's what really bears fruit. And real networkers and master networkers understand that. So that mm -hmm. step is really important. So when you do those steps, what does it lead to? leads to opportunities, it leads to business, but it also has other effects as well. Raises your personal profile, your brand. People know you're there. You start getting business referrals from it. You know the great network you have and the referrals that you get. It also gives you access to rooms and to people. Listen, you can't be a player if you can't get in the room. Mm. All right. Leads to new contacts. So all of those, those processes that are happening through that, that taking that time and following the process of networking, this is what it yields. And many times I've worked with salespeople and their sales directors saying, listen, I want this done. I want you in this quarter, have all these contacts made. But the problem is networking takes time. It's a building process. All right. A building process that's really incredibly important that you take that time to build the relationship. Because as I said to you, the deeper the relationship, the more you get out of the network. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the tool. Now, there's three tools I focus on, but I want to talk about the one today, which I consider the most important, which is conversation. All right. Why is conversation so important? Because conversation builds connection and conversation builds, gives contacts. So let's take the other one, building connection. 
building the relationship. I'm going to do that when I get to know somebody. I'm going to build that trust and credibility with them. I take that time to have that conversation with them. It also gives me context on that person, their situation, what they do. I And what I really want to know, when I really want to tap into somebody, I want to know their worldview. I want to know what's going on up here. I want to get a 360 view of that person. Mm -hmm. All right. Because it allows me to understand who they are, who I'm dealing with, and how I have to craft my message when I communicate with them to connect to them. That's really important. A lot of people just are speaking, speaking. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But you want to be able to connect to them. You want to discover new ideas. At Conversation, you can discover incredible ideas, new ideas, unknowns, things that you never knew. All right. I always mention to people, we were talking about strategy. There's something called a strategic conversation. What is that? That's when you have dialogue and then you, these topics will come up. And then each one of those topics I can take and turn each one of them into a discussion and dive deeper into them. It's a good process for doing that. But if I'm going to be a master of conversation, what do I really need to be? I need to be a master of small talk because no conversation ever begins with 11-dimensional universe, subatomic particle physics, string theory, unless you're at a, you know, an astrophysicist, <laughs> you're at a symposium, it generally never happens. So I have to be a master of small talk. How do I do that? Well, one, I've got to be up on a lot of topics, current topics. I need to know subject matter because as the conversation moves, I need to be able to contribute. I need to be able to carry the conversation. But I always say to people, be in tune to when you're talking to somebody. If they're not interested, change the conversation. But I always go, my favorite topic is what do all people love to talk about? They love to talk about themselves. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. All right. So let's walk into that a little bit because that in itself, it's my go-to topic. I want to know about that person. And here's the formula. When you first start having conversation with someone, you let them talk 70% of the time. You're going to talk a focus 30% of the time. The reason for this is, is they've done studies where they'll put two people in the room, let them talk 50-50, pull the people out and say, how was the conversation? They said, all right. You put two people in a room, you let them one talk 70% of the time about themselves, the other one to talk to folks is 30, pull them out of the room, and that person who talks 70% of the time, you ask them, how was that conversation? They said, that was a great conversation. And you know that John Osberg, Johnny Osmosis, he's a great conversationalist. I love talking to John. So John has done a lot of... Uh, social intelligence operative technique is in this because first off, he has made he's got them into talking about themselves, so they're doing all the work. John does very little. Number one, number two, doing this process, he's creating connection to them. This creates connection with a person because now you're saying, you know what, you're inch. I'm so interested in you. I want to know about you. All right. Can I so say one thing, John? To be sure, interested. Absolutely. Be interesting, you must first be interested. Just add it to yeah. Absolutely. And before you're understood, you need to understand. You know, mm. this is those ideas. We want to be able to do that connection. And this is why I always say it's something that almost looks very passive, but it's actually a very active concept. Because people say, listen, you didn't talk much. You didn't contribute. You, you contributed, but you, know, you let other people talk. Yeah, because I'm using my social intelligence operative techniques, these skills. I'm going to I gain all that information. And when I'm in a room networking, I can talk to a whole room of people. I know people walk into a room, talk to three people, and they're totally whipped because they've done too much talking. But let's go a little bit into the technique, too. First is listening. Listening is a really important skill. Um, first off, you have to stop talking. You know, I'm not going to learn anything if I'm talking. So number one, I stop talking. Two is I don't interrupt. When I get someone on a roll, I let them stay on a roll. I'm getting that information because many people, what happens is they listen to respond, but not to learn. Okay. I want to learn. I want to get that information on this context of this person. I want to get a 360 view of them. Some of the other techniques show genuine interest of in what they're talking about. If you're getting that glazed over look, there's no faster way to break connection with them. Now, here comes really the art form of this. You want to ask questions that get the conversation to lead the conversation and open a person up. So I want to ask questions like who, what, why, how. All right. I don't want to ask questions that just elicit a yes or no answer. 
My favorite one is this, and this is one I use all the time. When they're talking, I'll, there's a topic that'll come up and I'll say, that's interesting. Tell me about that. Okay. That'll open a person right up. That's interesting. Tell me about that. Okay. Not closed-ended, but open-ended, brother. Open-ended. Like, t- that's interesting. Tell me about that. And then they go into it. Here's the master key to this. Because they're talking about different subjects, they send little threads out to me, and each one I can pick, and I can direct the conversation where I want to go, depending on the one I pick. All right? Mm-hmm. My questions can lead. Um, I'll give you an example. So I do a lot of work with universities, career service departments. If someone said they were in the career service department, oh, really? Tell me a little bit about that. And do you ever have, uh, my question, do you ever have anyone come in outside to contribute or speak? Yes. Okay. Do you see where I'm angling them? So when it comes my time to speak, I have them in the right position to say, well, that's interesting because I do that work. So I've led the conversation. I've moved it by just, as I always say to you, blending with the energy and just moving it where I need to move it. Chameleon eyes, Bruce Lee, it. Little Bruce Lee. Yeah, absolutely. Flow like the water. You know, it's like the, what the principle I was talking about last time we chatted was the hop key, blending with the energy, harmonizing, blending with the energy. And it makes it very, very simple. It's a very easy technique. All right. Very easy, but highly effective with it. So some of the kind of principles we want to remember with this is certain things to stay away from. We're not going to talk about marriage. We're not going to talk about children. We don't know that status. The one we're never going to talk about today is politics because that's radioactive now. I'm not going to talk about religion and I'm never going to talk about finances. As I'm getting in, I don't I want to stay away from all of that. All right. All right. So well said. So here's the other. Oh, go on. Oh, Oh, no, I'm just giving you this. uh, Just I'm loving this. This is I'm a kid. Okay. 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 The other one is, is to treat people and their ideas with respect. That's a big one. Listen, I don't have to agree. My focus is to understand the person across from me. This is not the Lincoln-Douglas debate. I'm not going to get anything out of that. All right? I want to understand who that person is. I always want to treat them with respect. Now, let's do the flip side of the formula. So you're going to let them talk 70% of the time. You're going to talk a focus 30. When you get really good, 80, 20. Master Network is let someone talk 80% of the time. They talk the focus 20. But what are we going to do? Now, this is the important one. So when you speak, be interesting and have content others do not. Have that expertise, all right? This is really important because what this does is it takes your brand from copper to platinum. Anytime Johnny Osmosis opens his mouth, content comes out. That's really important that content is there. You're not just speaking to speak, all right? What this does is it differentiates you and your brand from others, all right? I also say to people, listen, be upfront with people, all right? Be respectful, be honest, be upfront. Don't be brutal, but be upfront because that confers respect to them. And whatever you do, do not be a biz babbler, okay? A biz babbler is this. A person who uses a lot of words is saying not much about nothing, all right? There's a million of them in the world. Do not be that type of person because if you're a person of content, people will be attracted to you and to your brand. That's really important. The other one I always say to people is when you're in conversation, be positive. People like to associate with positive people. You want to create create that positive, positive, all right? Another little technique in effective conversation is adapt your conversation style. So if I have someone in front of me and I'm observing them and they're a talker, like they like to go into detail, they like to explain, when it becomes my time to talk, I'm going to use that same style of conversation. If they're more succinct and cut and dried, I'm going to do the same for two reasons. First one is that that's their natural style of communication and conversation. They understand that. So you're going to tap into them that way. The other is human beings. We like to see someone across from us that has something in common. We have that common link. All right. We can identify that creates kind of that link with them and allows you to kind of connect to them with it. The other one I always say to people, listen, there's far too much profanity in the world today. All right, people like to use it as an emphasis. Be extremely careful when you're talking because it becomes a habit and you're going to be in situations where it's going to come out and you wish you could take it and put it back in, but you can't. And they've done studies. People use a lot of profanity, are considered viewed as being far less educated and intelligent. So you don't want to tarnish your brand. It's just something to remember. Now, 
nonverbals. Nonverbals are just as important as verbals because nonverbal communication is 67% of our communication is nonverbal. So what are some of the things I want to do to create that connection? Master networkers in their world, there's a concept called the bump. The bump is when you can create that connection with someone in a very short period of time. And when you're at an organizational function, if you're good at it, you talk to someone three to five minutes, you can make that connection. And then you can do the card exchange and you can follow up and do your LinkedIn. It's kind of setting, I'm positioning myself for that next move. So what do I want to do kind of my body language wise? First, don't be folded arms, put them in your pocket, be relaxed, have them down at the side. Eye contact. You want to be in this area of their face at the minimum 70% of the time. This is where that technique really comes in of that extreme focus. Um, Master networkers, I mentioned before, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, Reverend Billy Graham, there are people that they would talk to and only spend maybe three to five minutes with. And these people would walk away and say, it's like I knew him my whole life. It's that extreme focus that we don't let any distractions of the world around us. All right. It's not distractness. I'm focused into that person like we're the only two people in the world. And that's one of the techniques. The other one is the head nod. When you begin to speak, someone's speaking to you, start gently, not like Woody Woodpecker, gently start nodding the head. What that means is I understand what you're saying. Please, you know, tell me more. The other one is if I'm out at my six feet of COVID, I can gently lean in and nod, which means you're interested. That body language, you're interesting and I'm understanding. I want to know more about this. All right. A little emotion on the face. If John, if you said to me, you know, your hobby was riding, you know, a dirt bike or something like that. And the other day you fell off the bike, you, I go, oh, I'm so sorry. As opposed to this, I see people do this, uh uh-huh, which is what I call the Jimmy crack corn and I don't care face. Okay. Nothing can break that connection faster. So I definitely want to be focused in on that. All right. And when you speak, you notice as I'm speaking, my hands are moving. This is from doing a lot of lecturing, a lot of talking. It gives a little bit more texture as opposed to someone just sitting there or just standing there. All right. So the body language kind of supports and sends that communication, that message, which creates the connection as well as the conversation. Mm. So it's really important that we coordinate all those together. As I tell people, listen, if you're going to do like you're practicing an elevator pitch, do it in front of a full length mirror. You know, I was told this was an old actor's trick. And I've used this when I uh, practice my new offerings and any of my offerings that I lecture and talk about. I'll always do it in front of a full length mirror because I'm bringing everything in facial expression, hand movement, body language. And I know where I am with all of it. it makes it much more natural. Much more natural. Much more natural. Oh, John, I am a kid in a candy store here, and we're going to keep this to a focus 25, focus 30, okay. whatever the, the number, but I have notes that I'd love to just kind of uh, rapidly go through most recently. Absolutely. Yeah, and so thank you. Um, uh, I have a lot here because this is a particular passion. That's hence why we're here. Um, and it's not about me. This is about educating our audience. And so you just went through just gold nugget go after gold nugget. So hopefully people, cause it's going to be focused and it's going to be shorter can maybe re-listen to this uh, a few times, a couple times. I know others on our first pod had told me that they did because of the greatness that you manifested on, but to go back to it. This morning, real time stuff. I'm in a community focused meeting and I'm with people who I can tell are not eye contact makers. So to be additive to your piece, to say, I want to mimic in a way because you want that that mutual kind of similarity, even if it's not necessarily you, right? You know, a guy like me and someone like you, John, we have a lot of good energy and uh, we're excited, especially me. I know I'm kind of crazy sometimes with that. So what did I do? Instead of kind of what you were saying, which again, it's all about what's on the other side. It's like a mirror almost. Um, I, w- I was not making as much eye contact. You know, I would be, I would, oh, I open, I was, we were sitting down. So I opened my body. That's another piece to the hands in the pocket, another additive piece. I said, I was sitting there. So I wanted to make sure this person knew I was open, open to what they were saying. And I also wasn't directly in their eyes. Mm-hmm. I was looking around a little bit. I'd come back to their eyes. If they made it with me, I'm there. And then I leave. So more additive piece. But then I basically what I'm going to do is this, John, I want to go through a quick, 
just lists of things. And then there are some questions that I have for you to, to kind of wrap up because I know there's two things that come to mind in the time we're living in that I know with your expertise will be just pure gold for our listeners and watchers. Our millions of them, I got to throw that in there. Law of attraction, let's go. In. So um, asking questions is conversational control. Just again, these are additive things that I'd like to add in. It's not about me, it's about our listeners. Um, when you don't know something, ask questions, right? So Absolutely. if someone brings it, you know what I mean? Someone brings up a topic that you're like, oh crap, I don't know. Start asking questions and you're going to educate yourself and you're going to deflect from having to go and say, I, I don't know about any about this. And maybe at some point, back to what you said, be honest, be real. You may have to say, wow, this is fascinating. I've just learned so much about X topic. And, you know, I, I haven't really known much about that. So thank you. Um, so, so just other pieces, we said this in our first pod, John, and like I said, hey, I'll just show the audience. It's a little washed out, darn it. But I got a bunch of notes here. Um, this is from the last one, a phrase that you can use that will, will always serve you in conversation when you hear, when you're talking to someone. And like you said, you are doing the opposite of listening to respond and not to learn. We want to listen to learn, not respond is a phrase of to be additive. A lot of it, even today, John, you're saying all this beautiful, these beautiful techniques, these concepts, John, to be additive real quick. Hey, just additive here, additively um, to say, hey, John, I heard what you said. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Hey, here's something else that might be congruent to what you just said. Um, sorry, uh, ask more questions than you answer. Something we talked about, John, you've been a great mentor to me. A big shout out to you for all that you uh, have done for me and so many others. Ask more questions than you answer. Some of you can take into that next, uh, maybe those next five meetings that you might have our listeners and watchers. Um, another thing that you talk, sorry, John, just, yeah, I'm, I'm going. I, let go me, okay, Please. let me real quick be additive into that, okay? So in, in strategy, you know, what most people don't realize is we live in a world that everyone wants the answer. They want to have the answer. Really where you learn strategically, you know, if you study classical strategy is by asking questions unpeels the layers of the onion, which you learn more from it. So that's really important. Not uh, Many people don't put enough importance on the question, asking a question. The power of a question. The power of a question, right? The power of, of, of interest in somebody, someone, some organization, instead of coming in. And, and, and that, that's going to bleed into some other things, the good, the bad, the ugly. We did this um, in our first uh, in our first podcast there, John, uh, not naming names, someone that's in our community. But um, uh, I'll never forget the time that I'm, I'm at the Buffalo Club and I'm in a conversation with a person. Um, and, you know, it was like, you were kind of, this person was kind of with me um, and then did it two times actually in the span of maybe 10 minutes, you know, looking around the room, you mentioned eye contact, right? No one wants to talk to someone who's constantly scanning the room for someone else to talk to someone bigger, someone better, you know, in their mind, yeah. you, and you're laughing, right? But people do it yeah. constantly. So not to call anyone out, if you are someone who does this, maybe you're not even aware that you do this, but just take it away as always get that eye contact with that person. If you must jump from the conversation, immediately preface, I am so sorry. I have someone over here that's been looking to say hi to me. I just want to say hi, and I'm going to come right back, literally out loud. But this person, back to that, the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, and this was the ugly. Two different times in 10 minutes, I could tell they were scanning, totally, barely even listening to what I'm saying. And that, that, that air marked that person's um, you know, persona, their moniker, their kind of essence, their ethos. Their brand. Forever. They'll, ne they'll exactly, it'll never go away now. I will always think of this person in this light because of that. And it wasn't the first time, which is what really galvanized it for me. So don't be that person, right? Be the person that's locked in. And if you have to be human, be real and say, hey, I'm so sorry. I see someone here I haven't seen in two years or whatever it is. So adding to that, did you want to add into that use case at all? You know, one thing I will say, just bottom line, y'all, when you start looking around the room and you're not having good eye contact, it shows a serious lack of respect for the individual. What are you saying is you're not important enough for me to focus on? 100%. Just us. No one wants to talk to that person. And, no. and if you continue to do it, that kind of thing, you know, I have I have the respect to not obviously put this person's name out there. But uh, to my inner circle, if that person's names come up, I would say, listen, I'm not here to, 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 to speak ill. But it's the reality. And if I'm if I care enough about the people in my inner circle, I want to know what that yeah. I want to know. If we're going to interact with that person, what they're like. 
just so they have it there. Um, something else I'm moving on that you instilled in me that I never even thought of. It was about a year ago. We were on a mentoring call, you and I coaching call. You said it like this, and I'm kind of regurgitating and I Bruce lead it a little to my own. There's three phases to network building. First is to build. That's where most people get caught up. I need to get contacts. I need to get business cards. I need to know everyone. But what about maintaining that network guys and gals? What about maintaining that? And, uh, and that's something we can ruminate on maybe in our third podcast. And if you wanted to comment on, but to finish the three phases, the third one though, that I don't know, you know, I can't speculate, but um, the third one that I don't think a lot of folks may think about or focus on or just ruminate in and immerse in is optimize. John, you and I, let's use LinkedIn as the, the body here that we can compare to. LinkedIn has, if you're connected, you and I are direct connects. You're my first level. Great. So now I can see your connections, which are my seconds, right? Cool. So then you got thirds, right? As, let's just finish that. So first is you and me. Second uh, level connection is your people and my people and vice versa to each other. The third level is someone that I have no mutuals with on LinkedIn. Let's use this like we're in life. So that third level is, is where sometimes greatness can truly be manifested. So John, you've got a huge network, global, international. So I build enough going back to the early points of your conversation with me today. You mentioned trust. You mentioned relationship building. So you build that deep enough and you can accelerate it. There's certain ways to accelerate it. And you uncover so much of it, if not all of it. You build that trust well enough, whether it's within a couple of weeks or years. Guess what? I now have you, John, as my mentor. So I have that direct gold thought leadership that can pour into my brain. Then I can say, John, I see you know this person who is a second to me, right? So hey, you know Steve Smith over there. I love to talk to Steve because we have a relationship, John, all day, every day. You know, John to John, JB to JO, I got you all day. Guess what, though? You know me well enough and you trust me even, you trust me truly, fully. You will do this. Hey, I need to talk to Bob Jones. Um, yeah. I know you don't know him, but you know Steve, who knows Bob. And guess what? I got goosebumps. Hey, st- hey, hey, um, back to Steve, second level for me. Hey, Steve, I got a guy who I really, you know, trust. He's a mentee of mine. I see you know this gentleman, Bob Jones. I was wondering if you'd be kind, kind enough to um, put that in touch. John Osberg is whatever. John is the real deal. And um, here's why he's looking for it. And you will do that. So first, second, third, it's that build, maintain, optimize. John, the floor is yours. You know, it's the concept of multiplication. You know, going back, you've got to build that trust. You have to build that relationship before you get that. You have no idea how many people have called me from the West Coast and different areas now that hospitality is opening up. I need a good, great, um, you know, director to run my restaurants. I need, I just had a gentleman that called me, you know, I through LinkedIn, I said, congratulations. He took a VP's position at a large casino in California. And he said, thank you. So when are you coming out to train? And by the way, can I talk to you? And so I called you know, him, we connected. And he says, listen, I'm looking for someone who has a really high level, can run all my restaurant operations. And I knew a gentleman in Las Vegas that has you know, considerable credentials and operations and we connect correct. So it's happening, but you have to build there again. That doesn't just come because I know you, they trust me and they trust the people I'll connect them with. So the trust goes all around. And you're right, you need to have that or it just won't happen. If you're playing it like a numbers game, that isn't going to happen. If you build the relationships, build trust and credibility, that will happen. That's where you really dig into the power of the network and really get the multiplication from it. And there's nothing worse, John, than to do the opposite where, uh, or just using on the flip side of that, right? The reason why this is so important, like we say, trust so hard to to get it, but so easy to lose it once you break it, right? But then what happens? John, you play connector to me, your brand's on the line. Right. So and I'd like to also just add personal professional. They're blended. They're blended. Right. They are. Your community work and your business work there and your family life and all that. They're blended. Now you can have buckets and you can segment and obviously be respectful and private and, and, and discretion at times with what you need to be doing in the community with your family. But a lot of times, especially with my world and your world, John, we're solo producers. Um, people know what we're doing in the community. People know what we like, what we love, what we're part of. Um, and so that is all the more important to focus on the fusion of personal professional and don't break that trust circle. So if I connect you, John, to somewhere, I know you're going to do me a solid and you're going to have a great conversation with whoever it is and not the opposite, which is because I've had it happen. I can count on one hand, two different times. I'll never forget them. Get the call. John, I just met so-and-so. I thought it was just a general meeting, but this person pitched me on a business idea that I wasn't prepared for and I didn't want to talk about. 
and I go, um, wow, yeah, uh, I'm going to have a conversation with that person and this will never happen again. And you'll never, you'll never hear from them again and I'll never connect them elsewhere again. And this has happened two times and it'll never happen again. You know, so, it's, it's great that you bring this up because this is a platinum point. This is like platinum. platinum diamond. I mean, it really is. I had a um, an incident that happened to me not long ago. Someone came to me and says, listen, John, I want you to tap into your network. I need someone. All right. They had a specialized need. They wanted to, you know, someone. And I knew someone in that kind of did that work. It was in the hospitality world. Had considerable experience in private clubs. And I connected those two. I said, okay, let's create the connection. The person who asked me never called that person. And I said, never again. Listen, it's my credibility. You came and you asked me the favor. So let's get the etiquette on this. If you go and you ask for someone or you ask for that favor, you are obligated to give that person a call. They may not be the person that you want in the end, but you need to follow through on it. All right. I had a lot of apologies to do at one end. They said they were fine. They understood. It wasn't. He said to me, and listen, I know it wasn't your fault, but the person. Yeah. Correct. Your trust is so strong. They will forgive it because you have such a good relationship there. But you have taken doing that. You have stolen some of my social capital, the capital that I've built with that person. You've taken some of it. All right. And so you have to understand if you're going to make that ask, you are obligated to follow through. That's how it go. Absolutely. You are obligated to make the call, to talk to that person. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. But you are obligated to do the connection. And better yet, added to to that, John, how about this? It's not, I wouldn't, and I'm actually curious, and we got, I know we got to cut this here. So speaking Mm -hmm. of cut, but additive to that point, it doesn't hurt to report back, right? So when oh, I see, I make, I make, if anything, it should, it should honestly be a requirement. I hate to say it, like, I'm not going to lead an introduction by saying, hey, by the way, like behind closed doors, so and so, you, I want to know how this goes. That doesn't have to happen, but it's that nice to have, or we'll call it preferred, right? It's like I make so many connections, I can't keep track sometimes, and I take effort. I take effort in the notes that I send to connect people. And I don't want to make people who might watch and listen to this say, oh, man, I never told John how that went. It's all good. I don't need a thanks. I don't need anything. What I do like, though, is to know how it went. Can I be additive? Can I help add value? Um, and maybe maybe on the flip side, if it wasn't as great, that'll help me learn. But it's also nice because I went out of my way to do something. So it's like, you know, and I don't even, you don't even say thanks. It's just, hey, I talked to so-and-so. This is what we did. This is what we got. And thanks, or I, not even thanks, sorry. It's just, this is what we did. So now I know and not wondering like two weeks went by that big connection I made, you know, right. what the heck, what would what, what, what happened there? I, w- I just go put that under the category of common courtesy. Listen, yeah. if you made a big connection for me, I want to follow up and say thank you and let you know how everything is gone. Because listen, your credibility is in the game. You have skin in the game of this credibility. I want you to know how it went. All right. And if there is, let's say you hook me up to someone and I go and I try to make the connection and it's not on my end, but it's on their end. I want you to understand what's going on because that person may say something that wasn't true. It may. I want to know. And it's just kind of a common courtesy to say, thank you so much. And this is how it went. All right. Because you took some of your capital, your social capital, your credibility capital and put it on the table for me. Right. All right. And, and so, speaking of credibility and candor, this is not the focus 30, but what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up here and it'll be okay. a powerful finish. A couple more, just one or two, even a book to read that I got to think, John, you would be all in on this and, and, and amplify with me. Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Great book. It is. A, and I don't have it on my book. shelf. Pardon? It was a landmark book. It still landmark. is. And it's funny, you know, I hate to say it, this sounds, this will sound a little cocky or arrogant, but for people like you and I, John, that are obsessed with this stuff, this process, um, when you read it, depending on where you are in your life, a lot of it should be like, this is just common sense, right? This just makes sense. This is just human relations, relationship building. I hate to say it, people have a lot going on. So sometimes it's just not top of mind. I get it. But that book is your roadmap. Um, so again, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's normally on this bookshelf, but it's out to loan right now with one of my great friends. Shout out to Rob Minicucci. He does not need it, but he's just a, an avid um, you know, growth mindset person. So that was big. Um, and then these are the two questions, and this is where we finish. Okay. How do we network at a golf tournament and how do we network through the screen? And I'm not supposed to ask two-part questions, but it's two places, mm-hmm. just a high level bullet point, 
through the screen. So like this, and then, and then golf tournaments. You know, like you said, if you're networking, you can go through your LinkedIn, set up something where you can do a Zoom, you know, real quick. And you know what? Do a Zoom almost as if you're doing like a coffee. Set it 15 minutes, power, boom. And then can I connect with them face-to-face? Because face-to-face is the most powerful, but it allows you to kind of segue your, your way in through on that. And if you're at a golf tournament, listen, you're on that course with them. You're walking across. How many hours does it play to, play, to do 18 oh. holes? At a, at, a, at a corporate uh, charity tournament the, and, and with the dinner, the lunch and all that, I mean, yeah. you're, you're easily five, six hours. Okay. So I've got a captive audience for five, six hours. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So it allows me even on the course to talk, chat with them. And remember, it all starts with conversation, kind of building that relationship. So I can start building on the course. And as we go in and we do the dinner after, we can sit with him at the table. He can introduce me to other people. You see, never brush the process. So I don't have to. I'm, I'm slowly building because it's all about planting seeds. I get a card. I give him my card. We can follow up later. It's a great way to start that process. The problem is people want to do it all in one. By the time they leave that golf tournament, they want to have the contract signed. No, all we're doing is beginning the process of developing the relationship. Patience <laughs> is a virtue. There's a reason people say that there is power in patience. And this is where I'll actually finish. We don't have to address this, but it's something I came up with recently and it is congruent to networking. You talked about your brand, John. You talked about that relationship, the trust, the respect. If you were to, if this was your last day, and again, this is a big kind of way to end and we're not going to really talk about it, but we will okay. finish here. Live your life with this mindset. Someone I just came up with, Bruce Lee, people talking, you know, things I see, read. If this was your last day on earth, what would your eulogy say tomorrow, right? That's the way that we need to live our lives. That's how you live in, 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 in networking because networking really is just inter, interpersonal relations. You're building relationships and you want to be patient and you want to be disciplined and you want to have fun and you want to be about the other person. How can I serve others? How can I do the right thing by others? Think about that. If I die today, what's does someone write in my eulogy tomorrow? And if it's not where you want it to be, then start making moves on how, how you can then improve yourself, whatever it is, so that when if, when that day does come, because it's all going to come for all of us, you have exactly what you want written at eulogy. So just something to think about. What were you going to say something, John? I know it's a big thing to drop. I Here's apologize. Real quick. Find your mission in life. Have a purpose-filled life. All right? If you find your mission in life and love what you do, you'll never really work a day in your life. I know that because I found mine. And me too. Let's go, John. So John, oh my gosh, this was, I mean, shoot, we could have done this for five hours with how much we have, how much passion and energy we have around this. So, so many takeaways, uh, you know, share, comment, like, subscribe, find John, the same notes from last time, the same structure from podcast one with John will be there. So you can find all of his contact there, uh, his website, how to get, get in touch. I cannot say enough great things about this man, not to be a back, ma- back massage session, but he is the man. Um, Thank you so much, Johnny Osmosis. I love collaborating with you, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Yep. And 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 just sorry to interrupt. Gratitude to Vidwheel as always. And and uh, you got this. We got this. Let's go. Let's keep going. John Bordage, John Osberg. We'll see you on the next segment for the number three part series that we're going to be releasing in the coming months. Thanks again. Thank you.